Okay, Michael here. Uh, I've been playing with RD Works on Linux and I've given it an endurance test. But doing that endurance test, I decided to do something that would actually be useful uh, for a couple of purposes. One was I wanted to explore the ability of the laser to create half tones. Now, I've done some of this before, but I thought I'd go through the motions of doing extreme tests both ways, and I fabricated a few just to make this video as well. So I'll go through the motions of showing you what is necessary to get a proper you know, a half tone and so forth showing up on a laser. Now the laser, you've got to remember, essentially it produces either a cut or not. Now you can change the power, but you'll find that the um, what changes is the depth, not the colour. So I'm after the tonals, not so much how deep the engraving is. So I'm, I'm treating it really as black and white. So it's either cutting or not cutting, or engraving or not engraving. So that's, that also works quite well if you're just taking like a, um, like a paint layer off some metal or something like that. So you're producing a real one bit image. Now, I deliberately scratched around for a photo that I have. And we've done some event photography in the past. Anyhow, out of thousands of photos, I picked this one, not because it's a particularly exciting picture on its own, but because it's quite difficult to produce these tones with a black and white uh, or just on or off type uh, rendering. Now what I mean by difficult is if you see in this area here, I might just zoom in, Some focus, okay, the sealed road, the, the, you can see this very subtle colouring there, you can even see a bit of a dusty tyre mark there. Um, You've got some gravel on the side of the road. You've got grass and grass seeds here. The grass and grass seeds are very subtle. Um, and the farmland in the background, of course, has its own you know, little subtleties there. So I was trying to, I deliberately chose this photo. Um, what you'll find happens really, really well with the laser engraving is areas like this where you've got high contrast. They are very, very close to black and white. Or corporate logos, anything that's simple, um, that, that is done in what's called line art, basically which represents, well, pretty much black and white or a simple colour. So corporate logos are easy to engrave, but subtle things like this are very difficult. You have to start thinking along the lines, oops, where are we? You have to start thinking along the lines of, you know, a black and white printer. Now you can probably see, I don't know how well that shows up, probably not quite well enough. But you can certainly print something on a black and white printer and you'll be able to see they're made up of various size dots. Now, this printer can do 1200 dots per inch. The laser uh, engraving machine, I think you'd really be talking about 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimetre per pass. So the quality <coughs> of those dots is also very much lower. Let's say we grab that, whoops, where are we? That colour image with all its colour detail and put it in RD Works and printed it and cut it out about the same size as the original. This is what happens. RD Works' ability to interpret colour, it's pretty limited. Essentially you've got a black area and I'm going to call it a white area. Uh, this is a remnant of another experiment so disregard that little detail. But this area here, you can see it's, it's just a mess. You, you can't really recognise it as a car. All you can see is there's a couple of lines and the glint, where I'll get the glint from the windscreen, which doesn't show up very well. The bridge detail shows up you know, reasonably, and so do those um, signs, well that one does, that one's disappeared, which is interesting. I was expecting that to have come out a little bit better. But here it's actually just made invisible, completely unsuccessful. So I thought, okay, a good thing to demonstrate would be using a very, very large, I don't know if you can see how large it is compared to our original photo, bump up the size to see what that gives us and you can see it's very very limited improvement there's some detail but it's there's also some funny banding going through and that banding initially I thought it might have been smoke but uh, since doing a few other tests it's actually a result of the pixels misaligning with the passes of the laser so the next experiment was to simplify it making it a one bit image using my photo editor. I don't know how all that shows up. I'm hoping we can show that quite clear. But uh, where are we? 
the car here what should be dark is actually lighter and again that's a mismatch of the resolution of the image versus the scan lines of the laser cutting or laser engraving I don't know how well that shows up in the video but you can see that's quite high detail you can you can see the actual laser parcel so this is quite high zoom but you can see in that we've got quite a bit of detail from the front of the car there's a lot of detail has occurred now you've even got reasonable headlights even got uh, facial features are slightly showing up on the face of the people you can recognize the face of the people if I go back a bit further so you can see an overview of the image you can see that the picture actually has quite a good tonal depth to it and we haven't got those silly bands going through the photo there are some minor inaccuracies with a with any uh, laser or any any physical motion but you can see there's no silly color bands going through like there was on the larger on the larger um, uh, engraving okay so how do you get from that kind of mess to this kind of uh, beautiful tonal depth well that's what I'm here to show you I guess the first thing to understand is that we are simply talking on or off black or white something like this will engrave very very well because it's either there or it's not so that works out quite well but if you start thinking that the whole area being engraved is in fact that and you put the data into the machine that will produce that kind of information but done in such a way that it's suitable for generating the tone the same way that a laser printer does or a black and white printer does okay so what I'll do is I'll open that very image with GIMP oh. over here please <clears throat> okay now it is important that we uh, understand what we actually are doing with going from uh, color to black and white the first thing you may be tempted to do is do that straight away image mode indexed we can force it to any color depth we choose but what we're actually after is black and white now when we're going to black and white actually I'll leave it this uh, in these settings which is no dithering we'll see what it does we end up with black and white okay so you can see how that's uh, made harsh contrast we have really white patches and dark patches let's just zoom in to see what it's really done at high detail and yes that's what we have we have black and white which is rather like what RD works did now GIMP and all, all uh, the other good photo editors will give you different options I'll just undo that now I'm going to go uh, image mode indexed again but this time I'm going to choose a dithering now one that I found that it works particularly smoothly and that's what I ended up using for a number of engraving processes was what they call uh, position if we zoom in a long way you can see it is in fact black and white dots with a very good ordering system but what we have to understand here which I alluded to earlier is we do have to match these pixels to what the machine can physically produce now I settled on a resolution of 0.2 of, of a millimeter between my passes so really we have to have this image at a scale let's say we wanted to produce an image of 100 millimeters high and our resolution is 0.2 of a millimeter then our image size let's just change that image size go to scale image make sure that's locked that's set to pixels I don't know how well that shows up the height if we have 100 millimeters and we have 0.2 of a millimeter, uh, of a millimeter so there's five passes per millimeter will be 500 pixels high press the tab key and it gives us the right scale but watch what happens let's zoom in
and makes a mess of the dithering. So what I'll do now is zoom back out again, undo, and undo the colour. If we approach it the other way around, and change the image size to an appropriate size first, so where are we? Scale image. We're still going to be asking for 500 pixels. Scale. Now let's look at what that looks like. As you can see, the image still looks pretty good. And um, we now can change it to uh, an indexed image or a single bit image. That should be good. Now if we look at the dithering, it is a lot better in the way the dithering is done. So there you have the difference. Now the laser, my laser can certainly produce 0.2 of a millimetre. So what happens is when we go to RD Works, which I'll just export this, black and white, dash, okay. Now if we open RD Works with file, import, BW500. Now I'm just going to zoom out so we can see what that is. My cutting table is 500 by 300 millimeters. I'll put it where I want to have it on the table. Now, rather than using a mouse and being very um, rough with our positioning, we need to be precise. So we don't want any funny harmonics with the um, engraving. We want to have one pass per pixel. So what we do is make sure that lock is enabled. So you unlock and locked. Locked means it will keep the shape regardless of how we scale it. We need to change this number up here, which is the height, to 100. Press the tab key. Now ID works as rendering is also reflected when you do the um, cutting. It's not as well done as, say, a photo editor does. I keep zooming in. Now you can see that we zoomed in far enough. It's producing the right sort of pixelation. Okay, so I'll, I'll go cut that. Okay. The first one is now finished. I'll just zoom in so you can see that. So you can, got, you can see we've got quite a good half tone. Should the focus right? Yeah. So you can see that the half tone is actually quite good in this image. Definitely shadows, and considering it's such a small print, because there's the size of my hand, it's actually quite a small print. Those half tones have come out quite nicely. You've really got a good feeling. Your brain almost puts the colour there, if you, if you know what I'm saying. So here's the original. It's actually smaller than the original print. It's about the same as a 6 before photo. Yeah, so you can see the laser hasn't done a bad job of replicating the tonal differences. Particularly if you look at the grass and the gravel, it's, it's actually not a bad result. I have this piece of plywood, which has already been sealed, so the smoke won't embed much into the, um, the grain. I intend to basically finish it with a clear finish when it's in fully engraved. This is about 240 millimetres uh, high, so I'll make the image 200 millimetres high so it safely fits within that. If I'm going to make the image 200, 200 millimetres high, I'll start with GIMP again, wherever it's gone. Here we are, it's GIMP. It remembers what I did, I'll just zoom out. I'm just going to go undo so it goes back to the, the colour undo goes back to the original size. So again, we have to scale the image. Now I guess um, I should go through the process of image, scale image. We type in the size that we want, divided by the uh, pass width, which is 0.2, and it'll calculate that out to being a thousand, obviously. So let's scale it. Now we go image, mode, indexed. We want black and white, or one bit. And the dithering method, which seems to work very, very nicely, is position. There are a couple of others you can play with. You would have seen the Floyd Steinberg dithering on a lot of black and white laser printers. But position seems to be a much more ordered method. So I'll do that now. So I'm going to save that, Control Shift E. It's not um, 500 pixels high, it's now it's 1,000 pixels high. 
Okay, so I'll do that. Right, so what I'll do with that, that's that done. Okay, so the desktop, I've got the VW1000. That's copied. I'm gonna take it over to the laser. Okay, so we'll import the file. VW1000 was the image. Make sure the aspect ratio is locked. And we change its height to 200. It's up at the top here. 200. Now just zoom out, see what we've got. I'm going to put that. the bottom left hand corner of our work area which corresponds to where we are on the table don't know whether you see that very well okay so there are 100 millimeters a second and 60 watt of power uh, yeah 60 60 percent of my power I'm sorry so let's go start here you can see how effectively the one bit dithering works with the laser you get very very precise tonal adjustments very consistent result. My only limitations now are the physical limitations of the machine. We are looking at that uh, lower right hand corner where the gravel is. And there's that dusty tyre mark on the victim surface. I'll let that do its thing, it's going to be busy for about an hour. Well that was fun. We've got a pretty good result considering... Start off with that image. This image. And uh, we went from... So Hardy works default behaviour. Which is completely unsatisfactory. Through an experiment of very large engraving to see what we're going to squeeze out of that. Already changed to uh, one bit but not really successful because it mismatched the laser's resolution. Here's another artifact of laser resolution uh, mismatch. And we got to even this small image, you can see my finger in the foreground there, uh, with pretty good uh, tonal detail. It's still not too bad resolution, I mean it is getting towards the lower limit if you want to get some detail. And then I went to the final size that I actually wanted to produce in the first place. Here you can see a much larger product still not huge compared to my hand but um, yeah you can make out quite a bit of detail quite good shading the coloring is quite good considering it was deliberately chosen to be a painful photo it was not chosen to be the best photo and it's I think it's come up quite handsomely with the laser engrave but it's basically understanding how uh, one bit works compared to color and working to the resolution of your machine, not trying to go higher than the machine can. Um, completely balancing the photo to suit what your machine can produce. And you get beautiful results like this. And I only needed one go at this size to get it right. But if you want to do a sample piece, you can do it a half size sample and, and you can see the behavior of how it's going to work. And you can be confident you're not going to be wasting lots of material to try and find you know, the, uh, the perfect setting. Well, I hope that was of interest to you. The result that we got was very consistent. You can get those consistent results just by knowing your numbers, understand what your machine can do. I think 0.2 of a millimeter as a, as a pass with is probably a good starting point for most of the machines. Uh, so basically, um, your numbers could be the same as what I've done. But what I particularly like is you can preview the result to a large extent in your photo editor this way. Whereas without doing these uh, calculations, you end up tapping in the dark. You don't know what you're going to get until it's actually engraving. So it's important, uh, I think, to get in your head how the calculations work, how the passes of your machines work, uh, and understanding what going to one bit dithering does actually do to your image. And this method is very consistent because you are only working with black and white, even at the photo editor. Um, but it's important to remember to set your resolution at the colour stage before you convert it to the one bit. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, make a comment, ask a question. Uh, I've got the 
the donation tab enabled there. Uh, feel free to throw a couple of dollars in the in the bucket. Uh, also, feel free to make a suggestion of a video you might like to see. Uh, I hope there's enough here to give a bit of a feeling of the sorts of videos I can do. Uh, yeah, all bye for now.